All right, guys, welcome to a classic film review of 1962's World War II action drama, Hell is for Heroes, uh, starring Steve McQueen, James Coburn and Bobby Darin, and is the brilliantly gung-ho tale of a small troop of American soldiers trying to hold off a seemingly inevitable and overwhelming German advance. Now, the film was directed by Don Siegel, who would, of course, go on to make Coogan's Bluff, uh, Escape from Alcatraz and Dirty Harry. Uh, so you know what you're going to get. Uh, you're going to get some rough and ready, no-nonsense action when you press play. Now, it's a small, low-budget affair that makes it feel like it was made a decade earlier. Uh, war movies of the 60s would, of course, become huge spectacles. Uh, the Dirty Dozen, uh, Where Eagles Dare, uh, Battle of the Bulge. Uh, but Hell is for Heroes keeps things tight. Uh, offering a 90-minute grunt's eye view of how war is hell. Let's take a look. Sure, we could blast our way through, but we need at least ten guys to do it. I can make it with two. Says you. No, we stay right here. We stay here and wait. We're going to get plowed right under. We've got orders to hold, not to attack. Larkin, they're wise to us. The only thing that's going to keep us alive is to hit that box. It's at least a chance. Better chance than we got against the platoon, maybe a full company. So Hell is for Heroes is the story of a battle-weary squad of US soldiers um, on the fringes of the Siegfried line in 1944. Um, they're sat expecting to soon be shipped out and finally head back home. Uh, their small ranks are added to with the arrival of a replacement, Reese, uh, played by Steve McQueen, uh, a former master sergeant who's been busted back down to private for going AWOL and stealing a jeep. Now, already in enough trouble, uh, he goes on an unauthorised evening visit to a nearby town's drinking establishment and it almost spells the end for him until a Sergeant Pike, played by Fess Parker, um, an old acquaintance of his, arrives to save him. Welcome to the Peace Talks. Now, saved being used loosely as news comes through that the unit will not be going home now, uh, but moving back to the front line. Now, unfortunately, the Germans are on the move and Reese, along with the rest of his small squad, are forced to try and fool the Germans into thinking that they're a much bigger force in order to hold some vital ground. You'll have to spread your three squads over an area it takes a company to cover properly. I'll move the men out before dawn. We'll fall back through the woods instead of using the road. If we're lucky, the Germans won't spot the move and they won't know how thin you are up here. Yes, sir. If we're lucky. Now, the movie is essentially a series of ploys to fool those pesky jerrys. Um, things like having James Coburn running a backfiring jeep in a low gear to make it sound like it was a tank. This klingt mir wie ein schwerer Panzer. Wie dieser hier. Uh, and also comedian Bob Newhart um, is asked to stay and pretend to be talking to HQ on the phone to fool the eavesdropping Germans after the gang learns their base has been bugged. Temple Red, th this is Lieutenant Driscoll. Sir, I have five men in each foxhole now. I, I, I don't have any room for any more, sir. H have you tried Charlie Company, sir? Well, well sir, th there's, there's still a war going on in Japan, you know, sir. You, you, you might send them over there. Now, don't be fooled into thinking it's all hijinks. Uh, a brutal assault by a German patrol results in some tragedy, uh, but also offers us a glimpse at how unhinged McQueen's private Reese is uh, after we see him savagely hacking the enemy to pieces with a butcher knife. <laughs> Now, the team are cut off with no guarantee of when backup will arrive. Uh, and despite Harry Gardin's Sergeant Larkin urging the gang to just sit tight, a frustrated and war-ready McQueen decides the only initiative is to knock out the German fortified pillbox machine gun nest, keeping them all boxed in. Now, I always imagine that this is a, an early role for Steve McQueen, but he was about a decade into his career at this point. Uh, he had films like The Blob and The Magnificent Seven under his belt, and of course, uh, he would own the 60s, uh, a decade that would make him an icon with such films as The Great Escape and Bullet. Uh, here he plays the moody loner who uses actions rather than words, so pretty much standard McQueen then. You second squad? Yeah. Well, it's about time to send us some new men. Uh, I'm Henshaw. I'm a little greasy. Yeah. Um, it's undoubtedly his film. His screen presence alone too much for the rest of the cast to even compete with. And even the stunt casting of both Bob Newhart and Bobby Darin uh, can't overshadow him. Newhart, of course, the comic relief of the piece, which some people criticise, but I don't actually mind it. I think it's just enough. And considering this is a film that can be pretty bleak for most of its runtime, um, his moments are a welcome distraction. 
Hey, Annie, up and up. If there's anything you might need, I'm the guy to see. Uh, if I don't have it, I can get it for you. Beat it. Oh, excuse me, I, uh, I didn't recognize you, General. So in the pantheon of war movies, uh, Hell is for Heroes might not be one of the best known. Um, even in terms of Steve McQueen's filmography, it's probably not his most well known. Now, Don Siegel's direction is about as tight as it could be here. And he stretches what must have really been a small budget just enough to provide the necessary thrills and spills that you want from an action movie. Uh, the production actually mirrors the actual mechanics of the plot, having to make do with the resources at hand to make it look like it's a bigger production than it is. Now, another aspect that betrays the film's modest budget is its stark black and white photography, which really ramps up the bleakness and makes some of the action appear even more gritty and grimy. Um, a standout scene with McQueen and Coburn having to crawl their way through a German minefield at night uh, perhaps isn't the most realistic moment, but it's hair-raising nonetheless. Now, Don Siegel can handle an action scene or two, there's little doubt of that, uh, but one of the strengths of Hell is for Heroes is that it's also a great character study. Um, it highlights both the danger and death of wartime, but also the futility and boredom of the battlefield. And what's refreshing about watching it is that it's mostly free from the usual war movie cliches. Uh, there's no romantic subplot shoehorned in there. Uh, there's no nonsense about what everyone's going to get up to after the war and no big sermon before the credits roll and no spoilers, but it has a divisive third act that highlights how the drama we've just witnessed is just a small cog in the huge machine of the Second World War and that the conflict just carries on around the guys regardless. And like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, uh, Hell is for Heroes is almost a throwback movie to the war movies of the 40s and the 50s. Uh, it's undoubtedly a B-movie and reminds me of a live-action version of those little commando comics you used to get or can still get. But the fact the film was cobbled together almost by a director and an actor about to really hit their stride uh, with a budget that really pushed them into making a blunt, hard-hitting war movie. Um, the kind of movie that hasn't got the time or budget for backslapping or happy endings. Go check it out. Yes. And you're going to carry out orders, my orders, you got that? You wave that finger in my face once more and I'm going to take your head off. I'm going to give you that chance, mister. As soon as this is over, I'll square off with you any time. And you want to know something? That's the best thing I've got to look forward to. 